In a world where there's a million movie podcasts, here comes another one from themoviebit.com. This is the podcast. <laughs> Who taught you that technique? A friggin' cheese grater? Anything gets more than three blocks out, you turn it back or you turn it to ash. So you listen to me and you listen well. Hey, Big Howard, thanks so much for having me. Ash, no worries, man. I remember you from Monkstone if it's any consolation. Really? I'm from Monkstone as well. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Whereabouts do you live? Um, live? I'm about, I suppose, five, ten minutes walk from the golf club, maybe a little bit more. Oh, very good. Jesus, neighbours, there you go now. More or less, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so listen, uh, congratulations on, on Young Offenders. I mean, Jesus, like the success you guys have had and the hype and the publicity, it's insane. When you started on this project, did you ever think it would kind of generate this much excitement? Jeez, no. I think, like, w- when you set out to make a film, you you always, your goal is, and it has to be that, look, I'm going to make the best film I possibly can, you know, and and we really wanted to get it into cinemas and we really wanted to get as big an audience as we could but I think that it's it's definitely become bigger than anyone thought it could be you know we're just the whole thing has just gelled together so well we have a fantastic cast and the locations that we managed to get and everything I think the whole the whole world of the film just seems to click together you know and, and I, I think, think um, the weather as well <laughs> Jeez, the weather was awful for us. Everyone thinks we had good weather. Like, it was just, it was that summer which just rained nonstop through. And uh, we ended up just shooting in and out of uh, sunny patches because we wanted, we wanted, like we said, this is a summer movie. Yeah, yeah. We wanted it to be sunny the whole time. So it was literally just waiting for the rain to pass. Like, there's, there's scenes, there's whole scenes that we had to go back and reshoot from start to finish because it just lashed rain for the whole day. Really, yeah. Whole That's day. yeah. Typical Ireland. Yeah, yeah, but you know, that's part of the fun of it, it's part of the energy of it. Like, but like, we were down, we were down at Tree Castle Head, where that was one of the biggest scenes for us. We brought our whole crew down, they were on the side of a mountain, and it literally just rained sideways on us for the whole day. And we went and we shot everything because we were there, and we went back and looked at it in, mm. on the, in the edit suite, and it was just. It was heartbreaking. It was just like we had all these. We'd managed to keep it sunny the whole way down, and they suddenly land where they're supposed to be getting to for this main part of the film. And it was meant to be beautiful, and then it was just horrible. And then so we literally just we we went back three weeks later and got the whole group back together and shot the whole thing from start to finish again. Excellent and stuff. It was totally worth it though. Like I think we 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 felt afterwards. I think everyone was up for once we looked at it. Nobody was complaining. Just said, look, we need to do this. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I look, you, you got a great cast. Like, I think everybody you know, is well aware of Hilary Rose, Andy Sandy from Republic Italian. And PJ Gallagher but like the two lads Chris Wally and Alex Murphy where did you find those guys because you went through a bit of a, a slightly different casting process I believe yeah so um, we, we did an open call so Julie Ryan uh, produced the film with me and uh, obviously Hillary's my wife so uh, between the three of us we um, we we just wanted to make sure that uh, that we they're a young cast we, it was like 15 to 20 we put out an open call and we literally went around to schools and all the theatre groups and and anyone who had any interest, like we're, like anyone who had any interest, not anyone who had acted, like I'd say half the people who came through the door had never acted before, right? You know, and um, uh, we just wanted to make sure that, that we just wanted to find those gems that we knew were rare, but we just had to, we knew we'd have to dig deep for it, you know. And um, uh, Chris and Alex, like uh, like as soon as those guys walked through the door, we just got really excited. We said, Look, these guys, they had got theatre experience before, so they they had a bit of craft and. Um, and they just had so much charisma and so much charm, and they're just such such really interesting guys. We, I think, at that point, we knew we had something exciting to them. Epic. And Peter, for you, from from an onset perspective, with the cast, are you somebody that says, "Right, lads, let's let's do it my way from the script, word for word"? Then let's do it another way. Maybe do a little bit of improv. How do you approach that? Try and get the, the I guess, the best out of people as well. Yeah. So from a practical point of view, we we rehearsed a lot. So we spent months rehearsing this film um, and rehearsing every scene like in detail. Uh, and that really helps to cast a bond and to get to know each other and and really gel as, as off screen and on screen so that chemistry can 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 be reused and can, can be seen within the characters on screen. Mm. And then from a practical point of view, we shoot we shoot very much what's on the page. Uh, so that we have the film like if we if you if you don't shoot that you might not have 
the, the a storyline it might be bits missing from it which are important for plot so we shoot what's on the page and then we do at the end of every take uh, every scene when we're happy with what we've got on page I do um, I do uh, improv takes with the guys and with the cast and then that basically it's quite tight improv it's not it's the loose improv doesn't work for me anyway it doesn't work very well because yeah. The, the, like everything goes in a tangent and then we're shooting one cam- single camera so we don't have the luxury of two or three cameras to follow the cast as they, they, it, even, if, even if it went really well it, we wouldn't have it covered so it didn't really matter so so within a scene we would have uh, points that they need to hit and lines that they need to say and I'd say look I want you to say the same line but you can say it in a different way so that it, it felt more natural and then if there's a punchline at the end of the scene we'd say look you can you can do you have any other alternatives for that can anyone think of something funny and the cast are brilliant for coming up with that stuff and, and not even just the cast the like crew members would be firing and saying you know, what if you said this you know, that's brilliant like I'm I'm very much like if, if something's better and and people are happy for me to use it, I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll 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 take it on board and try and make the scene as as good as I can with that. With that. And, and and the story obviously it's based on the I remember the reports back in two thousand and seven that that you know nearly half a billion euros worth of cocaine down and off the coast of West Cork. For you, what kind of you know made do you think? Geez, this would be a great story, and the way the story evolved here. And I guess ultimately the movie isn't about the cocaine; it's about the lads and the journey that they're on. So, how long was the I guess the the thought process to get it to to where the movie ended up being? Well, it was uh, basically January 2015, and um, I, I just really wanted to shoot a feature film that summer. So we didn't have a script, we didn't have anything at that point. Um, but I had always loved those films like The Goonies and mm. E.T. and Stand By Me, where you have these kids going on an adventure. And I had also uh, gone on this bike trip with uh, my buddy Cotton Hannah uh, when we were 15, and we were just we were just complete idiots at the time. We'd like packed up our, our bags with like with beers and with ghetto blasters and and tents and started decided to go on this 80 mile cycle down to West Cork right and everything that could go wrong really did go wrong and a lot of that stuff a lot of the stories from this actually I took from that journey that we went on um so that that, that was probably the starting point for me and then I wanted to have something that was this 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 goal for these guys right uh, that was a, that, that 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 was a bit more exciting and there's friends of mine um, who who have the farm around where that that drugs hall came in. So they had told us stories about uh, people going down there, walking their dog, and while down there looking for that missing bale of cocaine. And I right. always just thought that was hilarious about these these people going down looking for a bale of cocaine. I and mean, what are they going to do with it as they find it? You know, like this is, it's not like they're not professional drug dealers. They just have to like turn it into the, to the guards, or are they going to like yeah, put it into yeah. little bags? Like so, just I thought that was a really funny idea in itself. So then I just melded the, the two together and and uh, just started writing like hell. We had to, we, we we made a decision to make the film before we had a script. So I had two months to write it. So we literally just wrote. I just wrote as fast as I could, and we cast as we went, and then started shooting in, in May of that, that of that year. How do you feel, Peter, when it's done? I mean, like if you go in and watch your movie, uh, and obviously it's a collective effort, but from you personally, when you're watching this movie with an audience, are you still kind of analysing it? Are you kind of satisfied? Look, it's it's this is where it's at. It's done. So how do you feel? Kind of can you still watch it as an audience member as opposed to the writer director? Um, definitely at this stage I'm, I'm sitting back and just enjoying it like uh, I think for me a film is what it is what you've got the material I have is what I had to make the movie you know and so once I finish editing it and I, I, I'm, I'm actually really happy with it like I'm, the sound mix I love the, the, the score I love like I, I think I was lucky in fact that we had time so I didn't if something wasn't right, I just kept on going until I was happy with it. I mean, other people might not be happy with it, but I was very much happy with what, what we have in it. So when I sat down, like even at a premiere last night, um, and watching it in Cineworld, I think myself and the cast, while we were watching it, we all just felt like it was just exciting. You're watching it with a public audience in a in where it's meant to be playing, in amongst big Hollywood movies, and it just felt like it belonged there, and that was just an exciting thing for us. You know? Absolutely. Um, like, obviously, you're bringing a ton of experience uh, to to the camera, but, you know, this is your first feature, so is there anything kind of, you know, that you've learned on this that you're going to bring to the next movie? Um, tons, yeah. Like, it's like... Uh, 
like first of all, what was great for me was having that deadline of having to write the script in, in such a short period of time. I think that I, when writing in the past, I had written a lot slower, and and in that overly examined what I was doing and stuff became a little contrived. And I, I feel that that since since I've made this, and even since we stopped filming, I've been writing a lot of other projects, and I'm I, I almost had a stopwatch for myself and say, look, this is this has to be just churn it out and really right. let the energy flow. And so from a writing perspective, um, that that means that I've learned a lot, and and I think for me, like. I suppose all the jobs kind of roll into one between writing, directing, and editing a, a film. Like when you're involved in the whole process, it does feel like you're constantly writing. You know, even when you're on set and you're you're talking to actors and you're talking about the scene, it's just an extension of the writing process. So it just, I think that's the that's the part which I I think I've really learned a lot from and hone my skills skills on. All right, just just, just kind of finish on the old cliche journalistic question for you. What's the next step now? Like, is there something you know? Is there is it another movie? Is it looking at something character driven like this, or or, or what's next for Peter Foot? And uh, so yeah, I'm working on uh, a few feature projects, and um, they're all they're they're similar. They're, they're, they are comedies, but um, it's varying from I'm working on one kids film, family film, uh, which is quite it's quite big budget, and then um, I have a, a drama a drama set in Italy. Uh, which I'm working on as well, which is kind of probably in the same tone as uh, uh, as good as it gets. And there's a lot of talk at the moment about the Young Offenders TV show. So there's um, kind of um, in the UK and, and in the US. So we're we're really hopeful that something will come out of this. That this will this will have a longer life than just in the, on the on the screen uh, in this release. Epic stuff. Well, listen, Peter, continued success, and thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much. Sir. The MovieBit.com podcasts. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Direct Download, and streaming on the MovieBit.com.